This is the first video I've done in a while. Uh, again, not using uh, the books that God had me uh, write at his command and direction after he spent about five years teaching me the scripture. That includes the Holy Bible, not so much the Old Testament, uh, and the Tanakh, uh, the Hebrew Bible. And uh, for me, having been an atheist for 50 years, it was quite an event, but again, he has such control over a person. Nothing, even when he spoke to me, there was no surprise, no alarm. I knew immediately who it was. And I didn't even think, you know, to say, oh, well, I didn't mean to be an atheist. Or, none of that even came up. It was very natural. Uh, I need to go over some of the fundamentals. Uh, I can hear them prompting me as we go. Now, at his command and direction, I say that instead of dictate. Because uh, Orthodox Judaism, they believe that God actually dictated the Torah to Moses the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, it wasn't like that at all. I mean, he would, for instance, say, go to the Jewish virtual library and uh, read everything they have on the Holy Spirit. And then we'd go back through, and he'd say, copy this, copy that, go paste it on your notepad, and we would start building a blog, which is where all the chapters, 50 chapters in the first book, Isaiah 53, and the day of the Lord came from. Now, I didn't suddenly, I mean, you know, these are my proofs. And God set it up that way. He knew what Judaism would be today and what they teach. The things they do not know, the things they didn't even know to question, such as the captain of the Lord's host. Why do they not believe the Holy Spirit, who is the angel of God's presence, is a person? Why don't they talk about that angel? I mean, I understand God is one, and, but just because he has an angel with him at all times, um, who is an angel whose body is the Spirit of God. This is in Isaiah 63, I want to say. He just appears one time. And that's what I mean. He didn't want them to know. Because he could have put that in the Torah. When he said, my angel goes before you to the Israelites, do not disobey him. He will not forgive you. I am in him. Okay? My name is in him, Hashem. And that tells you right there, but if you don't, if you don't, if you can't put it all together, you know, I don't know how people uh, actually interpret that. I know that uh, in the time of Rashi, there were only two covenants in the Hebrew Bible that had not been delivered. That would be the covenant of friendship, which God grants when Moshiach, the descendant of David, is here. He does not call him King Moshiach. He calls him my servant David, a shepherd. And that's in Ezekiel. After chapter 11 of Isaiah, where it says the Spirit of God will light upon him, uh, there's not another word. Everything... Uh, Rambam has got two chapters, I think it's 11 and 12, um, dedicated to King Moshe. I mean, that's basically how they referred to those two chapters. And he just goes on and on. He's going to gather his kingdom. Uh, he will have Torah. Uh, he will have all of Israel following the Torah. Uh, he will perfect the world. The world will be a people of a pure speech and speak Hebrew. And, I mean, there's so much wrong with that, and I don't know why the rabbis uh, after him and today just run with that. And I know about the oral tradition. I'm not talking about the oral law. I'm talking about prophecy. There's, there's a big difference. I mean, when God says celebrate Shabbat, okay, but he doesn't tell you how. We have to get an oral tradition. It's just like today how we celebrate uh, Christmas or Easter here in America. You know, things develop and everybody just follows it. Um, and, and he was wrong about the people of pure speech. As a matter of fact, I think he just picked out a verse he liked. And he wanted to say that because the verse before, they shall be a people's of pure speech, 
He's talking about the world and burning it down in his vindication and anger for how the world has treated his, his people, the chosen people, the Jewish people. He's not talking about the world. And as a matter of fact, that's a prophecy fulfilled. Because today, after Israel was formed in 48, uh, they speak Hebrew. It's a revived language. Never before has that happened with the, uh, for a culture to lose its original language and then revive it. Um, but back to this angel and the Holy Spirit who is a person. Okay, that's in the scripture. You can't miss it. The Holy the Spirit of God goes to Ezekiel and says, Ezekiel, speak. Or the Spirit of God took took Ezekiel on a vision to the Shabar River, I think it is. Uh, and that's not the only place. But, uh, and so what happens is you don't get to understand the concept of a man in divine beings. That's why Judaism says Jacob wrestles with an angel and God changed his name to Israel. Well, he's not an angel. And Jacob says it. I wrestled with a man in divine beings. Well, if you understand that God and his angel of his presence... Wherever his presence is, this angel is. And where's your spirit? It's within you. Okay? It's a, it, with God, it's just all around him. It encompasses it in him. That's why the angel and the spirit are one and the same. He's not an angel, but his body is the spirit of God. It's God's companion. But if you know that, so what do they do with Jacob? Well, they went to a man who was nearby. God would have told the angel, uh, "Tomorrow I'm gonna I'm gonna change uh, Jacob's name to Israel." And the Spirit would have answered him. Sometimes He doesn't. He didn't answer him on the first page of Genesis when God says, "Let us make man in our image." Okay, and the the only other entity there is the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Well, that's who He's talking to, and He didn't answer. That's not uncommon between the two of them. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> the spirit, the spirit says, "I don't know who's just a smart one around here. That's what he wants to do. Or who am I to say, die? I don't want to do it." So, um, so what happens is with with Moshiach, the Anointed One, it's that's Ha Moshiach. Uh, I don't know how it's actually written. Uh, my translation just says the Anointed One, uh, and I don't uh, write or speak Hebrew. I will one day. And I'll be able to open up some eyes and it'll be a, a, a second understanding of who I am. But what happened was, I'm like that man who God just went to and said, get up. The Spirit entered into him and God was in the Spirit. And just like Ezekiel said, you know, God was, uh, was, was telling me to get upon my feet. At that moment, a Spirit entered into me and I could hear his words. So see, they're together. So when the Spirit alights upon you, God's in him. That's, that's what you're looking at right here, a man and divine things. Because the time has come. God says in Jeremiah, after years and years and years of desolation, when the ruined cities are restored, when Jerusalem is rebuilt, from here to here and here and there, and it's much bigger than it was in antiquity. I will make a new covenant with you. Okay, well, it's got to be delivered. You know, and he told Moses, one day I'm going to send a prophet just like you. What would that be today? There's no bondage. There's no one that needs to lead the Jewish people to a promised land. No, it's to write, to speak his words, to tell his chosen, his people what he has to say. And he's doing it right now because he has total control of me. Total. It's like there's three keys in here now. Except one of them's absolute power and absolute knowledge. It's still key's personality. But you got to blend into that the Holy Spirit and he's got a unique personality. I mean, you know the difference in the two the minute they say a single word to you. 
And of course, it's spirit to spirit, or you would think of it as telepathy, brain to brain, but it's spirit to spirit. It's how God would talk to an angel in heaven. Spirit's amazing. So what's happened is that the ruined cities have been restored. Jerusalem has been rebuilt. Time for the new covenant. He needs the prophet like Moses. How are you going to know who he is? I have a description of myself, and I have plenty of writings and videos showing how I fit every verse and explaining it correctly for the first time. What are all these words for punishment and uh, bruising and crushing and uh, chastisement, this and that? Well, that's God's boot camp. That's him taking his power and just whooping you until you, you're just where he wants you. Knocks the fire out of you. Takes your self-will from you. And we've been doing it for 13 years. But you have to have the description. Listen, I can't imagine. I can't get anybody to even respond to the videos or the books. Or the books. And this is so novel and so new, I, I really don't have the answer. Eventually, I'm going to get the many that I... That I, the witnesses that I make righteous, people who come to believe, it has to be him. And isn't that a great thing? And they say, but that's not what we're taught. The whole world is supposed to be perfected in love the Jew. Anti-Semitism is on the way up. Well, i got news for you. I'm David. The servant David, the shepherd. And a shepherd like a rabbi, I teach. And what am I teaching? Everything you're hearing. Those two books are scripture. They're just not canonized. And it's just an important concept because no man can even, you know, just to come out of nowhere and say, uh, I'm Moshe. Really? Prove it. Uh, how am I supposed to prove it? You know, he's not supposed to work miracles. That's what we tell the Christians all the time. That's not, that's not who we're looking for. We're, we're not looking for a man who makes the blind see and uh, the crippled walk and walks on water and raises the dead. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a conqueror, a savior, someone like a King David. Okay, somebody who can take the enemy out of our country. That would be Palestinians. Or to blow Islam back and say, don't ever try anything here again, Iran. Lebanon, with your thousand rockets you threatened to send off at one time that even David Shields not going to be able to stop in total. God says, if you don't recognize Elijah, when I come, I come with, I will strike the land with utter destruction. Now he's not talking about him doing it like Sodom and Gomorrah. He's saying, if you don't pay attention to my prophet in this day, and we don't get that temple I'm supposed to return to built, the Middle East is going to destroy you. So I assume he's talking about nuclear bombs. Destroy you. There's 7 million Jews in Israel right now. And since the Holocaust, the phrase has been, never forget. And I take that to be, never forget what the world will do to us. And yet your rabbis don't, don't I don't even know if they've ever read Malachi 3. Ram Bam, well, we don't know if Elijah comes before or after David. And... and you know, summarizing, we're just waiting for the divinic dynasty to start over. Well, you better think about Elijah, particularly since what's, what's going on. The new covenant's here. Well, there's only two. So you go to Malachi. God says, I'm going to return. I'm sending my messenger before me, who obviously is Elijah, although I've heard rabbis say different. I've told you a singer say it's some priest. I have no idea. It's just like what Rambam says next. And I will return to my temple suddenly. Yeah, when it's revealed. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. And doesn't that sound pretty simple? There's only two covenants. Friendship and sin forgiveness. Absolute sin forgiveness of every Jew on the face of the planet. Does it mean you go into heaven like the Christian? You've got to go into the scroll of remembrance for that, and you won't find any rabbis there if they don't start listening to me because they've been dismissed. Not from their jobs, not from being rabbis. They're dismissed in the eyes of God, just as though who do not heed 
revere and esteem his name. And they did it because he's trying to make them listen to his prophet. He says they never listen to my prophets. These learned men of the scripture. These teachers. <laughs> I gotta go. Calm down, God. It's okay. We'll get it. Um, here, here's what Rambi, Rambam in the Midrash form on Malachi 3 says. The angel of the covenant. You know, that's, that's from the verse itself. I don't, even think, I don't know if he even put that you desire. Angel of the covenant. His commentary. The angel who avenges the revenge of the covenant. That's it. Didn't tell you what covenant. He doesn't tell you why there's got to be an avenge and where the revenge was. I don't understand any of it. But these are the people that apparently the rabbis think this, this information came down through because they got it from the time. And, and it, you know, there's so much in there that they believe Moses told the 70 elders, he told so-and-so, and it just tumbled down and it was just out there in oral form until the time that when there was a compilation of all these different stories. But uh, it's so simple. Okay, so that covenant's here. God says, I'm sending a prophet like Moses. He's never appeared. Nobody has ever written scripture since the Bible closed because God stopped talking to his prophets. But he tells you one day, I'm going to be talking to Moses again. And he gave one description. Now, Elijah was a righteous servant of God. King David, a righteous servant of God. Moses, a righteous servant of God. What is our description? The description of God's righteous servant. Okay? And I promise you, there's nothing those three could do that I can't do. We all were men in divine beings. David was. Moses was. And that's hidden in the scripture. If you don't understand the concept, you don't see it. But it's in there. And in my writings and in these videos, I pointed it out. And what do we have? Israel was formed in 48. They started restoring the cities. I'm born in 57, but nine years later. And they came to me right then. He's orchestrated my life from the get-go, but he didn't speak to me till I was 50 years old. And as I said, I was an atheist, and he said, that's what I want. I didn't want you to know all these things that Judaism teaches. I didn't want you to know all these things Christianity teaches. I wanted a blank canvas for me to paint. And that's me. And I can't, you know, I'm so tired of him taking my will from me and ready to get going. You know, but, I mean, he's kept me alive all this time. I've been shot to the belly. I should have died. Had colon cancer, should have died. Had lung cancer, should have died. At birth, they said, take him out. I was born premature, disfigured. And again, all of Isaiah 53 is just filled with words saying this man is blemished with disease. God chose to crush him with disease. He was afflicted. Well, afflicted can mean disfigurement. Afflicted at birth. Well, that's me. And why does he do that? Why do I have to be disfigured? Why do I have to have cancer? Because of the Christians. Because of the Christians. Now, who's going to take God's wrath to them? That'll be me. So it kind of all does sell. Because I can't wait to get started on them. And I already had to an extent. I know plenty of us have seen videos where I say Jesus was an abject liar and deceiver. And then I back it up. <laughs> I actually kind of read. God's over here and the Spirit's over here. I'm in the crossfire. <clears throat> uh, but I'm pretty much here. I'm talking to my mind right now. They can make it seem as though it's coming from here. That's what it, you know, th this is what Judaism is. And I just posted another video. And of course, it's in the books. The covenants of friendship. That's what you get. In Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 31, when he makes the new covenant, okay, and that may, it's, well, and it's also in the covenant of friendship itself, it's just worded different. It says, you will never be defeated and dispersed again. Okay, that's a good one. You won't be the taunts of nations. Why? 
because the Jews are going to be lifting me up high. And a temple is going to be built, and Israel is going to say, God is in there. That'll be after I die. But I'll go strolling around up there, and we'll walk around it. I mentioned that in another video. He's got all kinds of plans. I don't, I don't even believe the Temple Mount would hold it. But now I'm the descendant of David. David's the one who purchased it in a repentance because he had failed the test God put before him. And I know everybody, but and, and some people aren't even sure that's where it was. Some people think it was in the city of David itself. I'm not sure about any of that. Uh, I know this. There's people who have raised money to build it. Well, they can give me an attorney in fact, and I'll go purchase it in, in my name on behalf of God or something crazy like that. In other words, we're getting another piece of land, you know, in Jerusalem. It's got to be in Zion. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be up there. Preferably, see, I don't know. See, he won't tell me things to occur in the future. I got to wait just like everybody else. I just have a little more background than anybody else on how he does, his personality, what he will do, what he won't do. One thing he's not going to do, he's not going to strike down all the Muslims on the Temple Mount. Everything's in the real. His power that he uses is with me and me alone. You know, and I complain about it all the time. Well, he gave Moses ten miracles. I said, and, and, and you put your spirit on 70 elders to make them help him and assist him and believe in him, not argue with him that God was telling him all these things. I said, I could use that. I could, I'm a prophet like Moses. He said, that's not how I'm doing. You know, I just <laughs> shake my head. I said, I'm going to get out of here. I ain't had any money in 13 years. He made me terminate my law licenses. But anyway, so, so you go and you say, okay, this is the time for the new covenant. Here's a description of a righteous servant. And we've got four men coming. The righteous servant, prophet like Moses, Elijah, and David. You've got to have a description. As I say, I have a description that I fit to a T. And I can't get anybody to listen to me. Although God, they both keep telling me things are happening. This is the way we knew it was going to be. It's harder for people to believe in something they can't see. And that, you know, I said, well, they, the Orthodox, they pray for Moshiach every day. I mean, or at least three times a week. I just saw this big gathering on a YouTube video of uh, this huge throng of people singing, Come Moshiach, come. <laughs> I'm like, you know, hey. This is you expecting too much. Won't be the taunts. Will never be defeated again. God will place his temple amongst you eternally. That's in the covenant of friendship. So, you know, you're not getting utopia and human beings weren't made for what Judaism teaches. A human being is not made to be in a society where there's basically no emotion. Everybody loves each other. Everybody loves each other. No one sins. No one has faults. Everybody's singing, speaking the same language. You know, where's competition? Where's the bad guys for the good guys to fight? You know, it, you know it's an absurdity. And, and when I read the things that Michael Skoback has on his uh, rendition, a commentary on Isaiah 53, I just shake my hand. I say, God, are, are, are religious people just crazy? I mean, what, what is this? Not that I'm suggesting he's crazy, but it's just to me a belief that the leaders of every nation in the Middle East, every nation across the world, the United States, Canada, this, that, are going to as one hold, exalt the Jew and hold him up. And he's got that verse wrong. It doesn't even apply to 53. That's for 52, which had to do with the return of all 13 tribes. Yes, there's 13, the priestly tribe. They all return to build the second temple. But that's not what the Talmud says. Or well, there's a story in there that ten tribes were lost. No, they're not. Just read the accounts of Nehemiah and uh, the other fellow. I mean, they make it clear. They say well, Manasseh and Ephraim, they also went to, to Jerusalem along with um, Judah. And it's like... Here's their names right there in the scripture. 
and that's what I'm talking about. They take some of this lore, this oral law, these stories in the town, and they, they, they absolutely lift it above God's words in the scripture. Do not take from and do not add. And that's part of Judaism as to the Torah, but I promise you this, it applies to the whole book. So here, here we are at, at a crossroads. Uh, I hurt my back the other day, so I've been kind of laid up, not doing anything except uh, posting some videos that I posted before, just to keep them circulating. It's what God has me do. And uh, but I got to make it clear that I'm not backing off this, it, you know, because it, it, before He prepared me, before we went through all this. This fire refinement, as I call it. You know, that's what 53 is. You start out with six verses, in quotes, coming off three verses, uh, 13, 14, and 15. But see, Jews for Judaism would include 12, that there is an exaltation, because their whole argument of 53 for the Jewish people is based on an exaltation of the world of the Jew. Okay? Stemming, I guess, from Rambam and wherever he got it never going to happen. Every leader of every nation, they're called kings in the scripture, but just say leaders, Gentiles, non-Jewish, are going to suddenly realize that the Jew has been right about God all along. And this and that and all these different things that, you know, the kings will say this, the kings will say that. Hello, Michael Skoback, if anybody wants to relate it to him. Psalm 149, Kings shall be shackled, and there's something, something put in irons. Okay, and talk, he's talking about the day. He's talking about the day of the Lord. King shackled in verse 15 of 52. Again, that's where 53 starts. Says, King shall be silenced. So shackled and silenced, and yet for some reason, Michael Scoback witnesses. Not the witnesses who are sick from their sins. That's what they are. This is a story about a man who's as lowly as they are. Beat upon, hurt, wounded, afflicted, blemished with disease. They got crushes with disease. But comes to the crown, a treetop crown out of arid ground. The arid ground being Gentile country. Uh, temple crown, that's just... Uh, just showing that uh, this entirety of all this is going to be successful. But, and what does he do? Well, he makes the many righteous. He's my righteous servant that makes the many righteous. Is he going to go make these kings righteous? Is that what's going on? King Silas, God, for some way, knew they were going to do this. Somebody was going to do this. And it turns out to be Mr. Scoback and Mr. Toby is singing. Except he goes the Christian route with Leviticus and human sacrifice. That's what he says, verse 10 of Isaiah 53 is. God shows, <laughs> and he's wrong. I mean, if he really believes that's his translation, uh, he, needs, he needs to work on his translating Hebrew to English a little bit better. And you can tell him I said so. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to draw fire. They, yeah, and also tell him this. God's reckoning is here upon them, and they are dismissed. And they're going to have to they're going to have to deal with me if they ever want to see the heaven God is creating for the Jewish people and the Jewish people only. And I've seen it. It's not something you want to miss. I've been up there so many times into the temple, to the very room that will be mine. He says, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth. There's your entertainment other than getting with other people in the meeting places who are inviting them to your room. You'll see yourself embodied, by the way. I don't know how he gets that word, but, but you'll be comfortable with it. Uh, he, I've been in vision and spirit, and you can't see your body, and that, that'll, that'll spook you <laughs> at first. But uh, he had me walk out to this like terrace uh, window, and he said, look down. And I saw the world being formed, as, as it would have been on the first page of Genesis, in chaos. This and that, no living life, just tectonic plates, volcanoes, oceans being formed, and on and on. And it's just incredible. And of course, time will mean nothing to you. And... Uh, <laughs> I 
as always, my camera goes off after a half an hour. Uh, so you got, you got this terrace, this bay window that extends from your room. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, I, I, are people going to look the same? He said, identical. He says, everything I do is perfect. And the, which one of you? His spirit says, don't make this to Toby a singer who says God created an imperfect world. And he's going to come back with Moshek one day and make it perfect for the Jew. <laughs> God said, no, it'll be exactly the same. It was perfect. <laughs> Till then God said it. Told his prophet like Moses, his righteous servant of Isaiah 53. You know, and they're the, they're the biggest problem. There's no Jews out there who are interested in 53 that don't adamantly say, no, it's not, it's the people of Israel. I have been tossed out of groups for suggesting otherwise. <laughs> and, you know, and, but they don't... I, I, the best of my knowledge, these people don't know their arguments. Their arguments are an absurdity. Both of them, an absurdity. And I like, if they want to get on a live stage with a live feed somewhere, I'll take them both on at the same time, and we'll go through it. But in any event, how did I learn all these things? How did I learn what the host of the Lord's host is? How is it I know what the three verses of the captain of the Lord's host is about? You know, and I go on, you know, it says, who can believe our report? Who can believe what we have heard? And um, uh, people uh, will hear what they had never heard and see what they had never seen, something like that. And I got, God dictated about a page and a half of typing on all the different things that I had in that book that nobody could be expecting. It's just a mountain of evidence. And that's why, I mean, I don't worry about it. I'm just going to tell God, God, first of all, you know, I know you're perfect. I know everything you do is perfect. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand. You know, sometimes he hurts me so much and, and, and puts me down so low, and I can't understand it. It's just like, why? I, I've written your books. I've, I've done videos of every chapter in your books. I said, you know, you're the one that didn't get it published. I said, you got to market that thing. Publishers do the same thing that uh, the rabbis are doing today. You, as you can imagine, there's plenty of rabbis looked at these videos. There's over 200 of them. And they don't say a word. They don't say a word. Um, but they, they need to learn, though, that it's true. And so I'm thinking the witnesses aren't even going to be rabbis. But couldn't we use them? Look at the followings Jews for Judaism and Toby the Singer has. He can get, they can get back in good graces pretty quick. But they're going to have to teach uh, those books and, and say they were wrong. They, but they can blame it on the people before them. <laughs> they just say, uh, the Rambam was wrong. You know, they fooled us. We went with it. But... Uh, and, of course, these kind of tapes where I'm not just uh, reading from the, a chapter from the books on um, the birth of the Holy Spirit or something. And my knowledge of heaven is unsurpassed. Well, that's, which, that's why God took Elijah to heaven. I've never heard a rabbi talk about it. I can't. I haven't really checked the Midrashers, I don't think. Why does he take Elijah specifically? No other person in the Bible. That's your clue. And then he sends him back. Nobody even talks about it. What's well, because you go ask the guy, tell us about heaven. If you've been in heaven, if you're Elijah, you're supposed to know about heaven because God took you up there and he sent you back. Um, but you still need a description because nobody's going to believe what he says about heaven. If they don't want to. So there's one description in four men, and they're all righteous servants. And I can handle whatever David could handle, Elijah can do. The messenger, the recounselor. I mean, he's pretty much, his purpose is pretty much written into Isaiah 53. Make the many righteous, because that's how he recounsels family members one to the other. It's through the amendment to the first covenant. That's what the new covenant is. It's an amendment with the addition of sin forgiveness, which is not unusual either. He did it for the uh, Assyrian Babylon exiles. And, and he told them, it's not because y'all deserve it or anything, it's for my name. But then they built the second temple. 
a sin-free people, a holy people, a holy seed built the second temple. And they didn't even know it. That's what the dream of Zechariah is about. That Rashi said that we can't figure out what's going on and we don't know what this means. Well, and he also missed the angel, the angel of the Lord being in a man and God being in him. He missed that too. Did I all of a sudden become more brilliant than any religious leader, uh, Jew, that ever lived? Because I can bounce any of them off the walls with my knowledge and never forget who's inside of me. I'm just the clay. But, you know, you may as well look at me and go, I think God's speaking directly to me. <laughs> and guess what? He is. That's how powerful this is. Now, you wait till that gets around the world. And again, man's not made for utopia. And the leaders of the world who are silenced and shackled are not going to ever exalt the Jew. David is here. Anti-Semitism is going up, not down. The only place Hebrew is being truly spoken is in Israel. And um, just try to get everybody in Israel to follow Torah. Make all of Israel observe it. All Jews in Israel. Just go try that one. <laughs> you know, it, it's an absurdity. And, you know, young people today are more like me. They're kind of like, you know, there's things that just can't happen. And they're used to fake news. They want things proven to them. You start laying all that on them, and they, just, they may not even say it to you, but they're just going to be going, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. <laughs> that's what I do. And I'm like a kid. So, this is me talking to God's face and face. It, that may have looked like that was a natural motion on my part, and it was to an extent, except he did it. Yes? <laughs> God? So that's it. And that's the Holy Spirit. The, the things I can share with people, God's right here. He's all around me. He's within me. Two clouds, two clouds. This is how they're in one another. One cloud is spirit. The other cloud is God's presence. Different material that we can't see. Different element. Like, you know, this is spirit, this is brain <laughs> and power. Okay? But they're like clouds. They can drift amongst each other. There's scripture that shows us, but they can, they can act apart at the same time. Um, and nobody would know that when they read it if they didn't understand all these concepts. So when the Spirit and God, they're together, when that Spirit alights upon a man, and as Ezekiel tells us, entered me, and then I could hear God's words, that's what the alight, and it's His presence, angel of His presence, His Spirit all around him. So when you read Isaiah 11, you know that when the Spirit of God alights upon the descendant of David, that includes God. He just doesn't tell you. Again, it's a teaching of mine that is backed up by the scripture for my proof. Because I'm not going to make the blind see and the cripple walk and I'm not going to walk on water. You know, uh, I'm certainly not going to raise the dead. I don't believe it. It's another thing they did. Ran back. back then, people believed in resurrection of the dead. Okay, because they just didn't get a spiritual heaven being with God. They just didn't make any sense because gods were always angry. That's why there's bad things in the world. And, um, you know, knowledge was, there wasn't any. <laughs> there was no knowledge. So, uh, but he made that one of the 13 principles of the fundamental, the fundamental principles of Judaism. And they prayed for that, the resurrection, which is supposed to happen when I'm here. Okay, so they pray for and they say they believe that every Jew that has ever lived. Okay, let's go all the way back to Egypt. When they first got there, you're going to get those people too. Everybody, Holocaust, everything, billions of people, I'm quite sure, are going to just suddenly appear and the government of Israel is supposedly going to take care of them, I guess. You know, sometimes you got to get outside the box and use the old your mind and think about what you're saying. It'd be a, 
a belief or a prophecy. I don't think God ever said it. <laughs> Wayne Ben made it up. But uh, no resurrection, people. And be glad of it. You see, I mean, they teach these things, but if you really think about it, uh, oh, women won't have pain in childbirth. You might say, well, I'll take that one. And I'd say, I don't blame you. I've had over 15 surgeries. i got scars everywhere, which is also in Isaiah 53. Um, he was exposed to death. I was exposed to death. But, you know, I've got like four different Isaiah 53s. One of them, which is just as bland as can be, the introduction to uh, both of the books. Uh, another one is my commentary versus the commentary of Rashi. Uh, another one is just my commentary showing verse by verse that not one verse fits Jesus. Other than the verse that said he was a sinner, because he was. He lies. He lies and deceived, and he's deceived billions of people. That's if you believe in Jesus, and I do not. And my witness is God and his spirit will tell you there is no Jesus. Now, who's going to be the greatest anti-missionary of all time? Moshe, that's me. Listen to my names. I'm God's righteous servant. I'm the prophet like Moses. I'm the descendant of David. I am Elijah. I am, and this is according to a song, which is also in the book that he dictated, God talking. Tell the prophet, write this song down. It's scripture, and it's also on video. Uh, eternal priest, just like King David, of the order of King David in Melchizedek of Salem, which is Jerusalem, and uh, a rightful king. If there were still kingdoms and the promised land needed a king, I would be rightfully placed in that position. A rightful king, but I'm not a king, I'm a shepherd. I'm going to lead Judaism to the promised land. What's really going to happen? And it's going to fill their synagogues back up because that's what Elijah does. Bring the whole family back. What am I going to do? I'm going to show Yeshua people that, boy, have they been <laughs> led down the primrose path. I'm not even sure what that means. But uh, so there's all kinds of great things that are going to come from this, and there's no question I can't answer. You know, that God wants me to answer. I mean, a scientist can come up to me and say, well, we're set here on uh, uh, something, something physics and black holes and this, that, that, this. And God would just have me say, check this thing out and let them go. And it would be a door opening for them to discover things. You know, there, there's no end to what I can't do. God says he's got better training principles for the soldiers of the IDF. And just, you know, there's no end to it. But I have to be believed. And this is not happening. But as I said, I'm convinced. As I tell God, look, you still owe me stuff. I mean, I'm filled just about all, the, <laughs> all these verses. Where's my portion and my spoil, which is the many and the multitude that I make righteous? And I don't actually do it. Because what I've got in the book, and they become official when the books are published, if anybody ever wants to help me on that, um, I, I, I basically need rabbis to say, oh yeah, no, we get it, we've been wrong. He's right, that's him, that's the guy. <laughs> I put it, <laughs> can you say, define these guys? <laughs> but I'm explaining the problem to you, and I'm not going to stop talking about it, and I'm going to keep, I call it flipping. You know, I've really got about 40 original, there's 50 chapters, I've got about 40 original videos but uh, we re-download them and uh, put a different title on them most of the time and put them back out there. God says you have to with YouTube if you want to keep them circulating. If you won't keep saying, and you know, I do, I get enough views. If you look at any single individual video, the most with you would see is 144. But I'll see somebody like Toby a Singer, you know, filed his video two days ago and it's got 1.4 thousand people or a billion people I don't know what it is dude if you take all my videos together I got it pretty good you know I've had about 2,000 views total in uh, less than three months but that's not it's, it's really not the quantity it's not a popularity contest I'm looking for the witnesses I'm looking for the many 
I'm looking for somebody to help me get these books published because when they're published, all Jews are sins for you. Okay, it's in there. Um, that this is by, by the, the uh, copyright day or something. Uh, once it gets on the shelf so that everybody has an opportunity to know because once you know you've been forgiven, that doesn't mean like the Christians in some of the sects uh, can keep sinning. They say, oh, Jesus, forgive the sins you're going to do you don't even know yet. Because he already knows. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right, they can sin all they want. Because of human sacrifice, by his blood, we are saved. <laughs> I'm going to rock their world, I'll tell you, but i got to have the witnesses. i got to have... I gotta have those rabbis who say, I wanna see this heaven and everything he's saying makes a hundred percent sense. It just brings it all together. It's not just a bunch of, you know, wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be nice if the world looked a Jew? And uh, if nobody if everybody lived to be a thousand years old and women and nobody ever was hungry, wouldn't that be great? Well you're not the only religion to do that. But I think only religious, see, I'm a leader, I'm a shepherd, okay? But I'm not that kind of religious person. Again, atheist, 50 years. Um, and I was adamant about it. I didn't have anything to do with anybody that wanted to talk scripture or teach me anything. So, uh, okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Like I said, I just, my back has <laughs> been laid up about four days. I was, my mom, uh, falls all the time and uh, I was and she's very heavy and I was trying to get her back up in the bed and you know she's 86 years old she couldn't help much her legs were weak and uh, I just wrenched the muscles in my back so I just I don't know watching a lot of movies which we often do and of course it's football week uh, I went to Texas A&M University see I'm a leper scholar that's what that means in case people haven't read it or seen the video that's what the Talmud says. Toby is singer and Michael Skolbeck, actually it's not Michael Skolbeck, but he does talk about it. It's somebody in his organization wrote that commentary. It's a longer name. I, I, and I don't remember, I've never seen him on video. I've only seen Michael. They changed it because they, and it's presumably started with Rashi. But this is the same Rashi that says we can't interpret Zechariah 1 until the teacher of righteousness comes and tells us what it means. Okay, I did that. It's one of the videos, which has been flipped about three times. Yeah, and, and you know what it's about? Why this, uh, why, why this angel says something in the dream? What was it about? Well, it's all explained. But it's because... The Assyrian Babylon exiles, as they had returned, pursuant to declaration by Cyrus of Persia, y'all can go back to Jerusalem, build God's house. They did not know they had been forgiven of sin. They never knew. I don't know where the scroll of Isaiah was. That's where you find it. Isaiah wrote for the sin forgiveness for the um, exiles. Jeremiah wrote it for the Roman dispersal. So, they didn't know. Well, I can't get the books published, okay? We're running into the same obstacle. You see how God wrote that? He knew how, many, how difficult it was going to be to get people to believe. He said, you know, it was hard in the past. You know, people would just jump up everywhere and say, I'm a prophet of God. God's telling me to tell you all this. And, you know, people would become uh, uh, wary, I guess. So. And they had no proof. You know, what happened was, uh, the, and I don't know how, what the actual prophets went through. Uh, Isaiah, I mean, did he take his writings daily and said, this is what God dictated to me last night? You know, we call him a prophet. But he wasn't married to the prophet this. Okay, he's called a prophet. But anyway, I don't know how all that works, but I can find out if God wants me to tell anybody. Um... God still likes me using motorcycles as my uh, my picture for my videos, and I enjoy it too. They kill me with it. I want that motor, one of those motorcycles so bad. I dream about them. Um, but um, 
I said, are you sure? Shouldn't they just see me or Jews for Judaism? I think he's got a set, a set thing they use. And he said, no, the minute they see a motorcycle, they go, there he is again. <laughs> and then, huh, I was one of us seen it. <laughs> I'm not mad because I thought that's, he said, okay, so few people are, you know, is they, they might see three or four of your videos. They haven't necessarily seen them all and can spot a replica when it comes out. Anyway, so we're still having fun in here. It's been kind of slow. Keep all that in mind. Um, these things I told you to tell those to call their shows. They won't air it, but call them anyway. Uh, this is it. This is what you get, rabbis. And I'm here to have a reckoning with you as God's representative, just like Moses, uh, and tell you you're dismissed. If you if you want undismissal. You gotta have restitution. Uh oh. I think this is a good time to cut out. There's anyway, there's video on making restitution too. And basically it is go tell your flocks, all your followers, Judaism has been wrong. And this is what we really get and he's here. It should be a lot of fun for him. I mean, because if you don't recognize me, not only is Israel gonna be destroyed in the future, struck God said utter destruction. Um, you're going to miss what God said he would do for you. Covenant friendship. And I just thought, did a video today. This is the 8th or 9th. And it's in there. Uh, they're long. Um, and, and that also is in the book. When they're published, the covenant friendship goes into effect. Which means, you know, we're going to start to really uh, talking about the temple. And Now, the way God had been telling me up till just about six months ago was it's going to be on the Temple Mount, things will change. But this is just another way of looking at it or thinking about it. Uh, but he also says the complex is going to be too vast. There's too many Jewish people today. He says the Temple area just wasn't that big. The Temple Mount's not that big that the Dome of the Rock's on, uh, that Mosque of Muslims, their third most holy site. Uh, you know, I mean, it's going to be for, for families. And you, you maybe even have schools up there. And uh, recreation areas. Just, you know, just about a, a place you could go spend a couple of weeks at. Every day, all day long. And uh, so, that's where we're at. I'm still looking for my witnesses. I'm looking for the many. And if you hit me, <laughs> see this again, real quick. That's why I don't have to make everybody righteous. I come with a covenant that says everybody's forgiven. My job as a righteous servant who makes the many righteous, I make them righteous by making them understand who I am, get back to sin of God, and they're going to want to. Because they're going to say, God is here. I want to be an observant Jew. He is here. Everybody says that man's him, and every proof in the world has been given to our rabbis, our shepherds. See, they're out there. It just doesn't happen to be those who make money saying things different than I'm saying about Isaiah 53. See, they, I, I'd just be amazed if they hadn't heard there's someone out here saying he's Moshiach describing Isaiah 53. I would just be, you know, at least a rumor of it. And then these great guys, these great rabbis wouldn't go check it out. I need to go check this out. You know, we got to make sure. I mean, it could be Elijah. And you know what Malachi 3 says. You know, something. Aren't they leaders? Aren't they supposed to basically, you know, protect your souls and yourselves? I mean, be, be shepherds of a flock. You know, round the sheep back up that are strained. Do, do what you can. I don't understand it. And uh, this thing may start up going through them. Or I may never talk to them. I don't know. But uh, any comments, my emails on my channel site, uh, any, any questions you have about anything, uh, particularly this process I've been going through, there's a lot of information on it, but it's not endless. And, um, but nothing, we, don't, we don't get all square one here, and I'm sure we will, but uh, with where we're at right now, we're just going to just sit here and just keep doing the same things. 
and uh, I for one, I know it doesn't bother them. Time doesn't mean anything to them. I'm like, well, it didn't mean something to me. And basically, <laughs> I get so this isn't your deal. You're just the you just the, the, the human body we're using, and your personality. And then they even take credit for that. They say, you know, your personality is pretty much molded by us from the get go. And so I said, you mean if I had been born and the Spirit had lit upon me at birth on my first year, that I'd have a different personality? I wouldn't be the person that I think I am? They said, that's exactly correct. I said, how am I ever going to know that's true or not? Because I can hear the Spirit over here laughing. I can't tell he's being serious or not. In any event, this is who I am. And this is the exact personality God wanted for the day of the Lord. Thanks for listening, and uh, I don't know when we'll do another one of these. I hope it's soon. I enjoyed doing it. Everybody have a good night.